Hello there, everybody. RockRage8962 here with a continuation of Octavia in the Underworld's Cello. Unfortunately, the final game has not been completed and released yet. However, the creator did release an extended demo on Halloween 2014. And seeing as how I enjoyed the first demo, I decided I'd try this one. I actually have played this demo beforehand, however, that was only just to see how far I could actually get. Just so I wouldn't end up wasting time in the recording later on, babbling around like an idiot, just trying to figure out what to do. So, without further ado, let's start a new game. And this time, I will also let the intro play for this version because, well, it now has voice dialogue. This game contains voice dialogue. Would you like to turn the voices on or off? Having them on will advance the text automatically. Having them off will require you to click or press any key, except escape, to advance. The voices are now on. See intro movie? Absolutely. There's Somewhere some at the edge changes. of the ever-free forest. Oops. How much longer, Vinyl? My hooves are killing me. Just a bit further. You ready to party down with every pony? Not exactly. I would much rather be composing another piece at home, instead of trudging around in a forest filled with bugs and dangerous creatures. Don't be such a stick in the mud, Octavia. There's plenty of them in that puddle over there. <laughs> you didn't get my joke? Because cause there's the puddle and then the... I'm sure you got it. I can't believe that the mayor would be... brash enough to hold a party in the middle of nowhere. Come on, where's your sense of adventure? Having a nightmare night party in the middle of the woods sounds awesome! If anything, the wild animals will be stoked that I'm bringing some mad beats for them. Well, it's just that... What? What's up? We've been walking for a while now, and I can't help but wonder... We wouldn't happen to be lost now, would we? Not a chance. The directions on the invitation were super clear. Besides, you are traveling with an expert navigational list. That's not a word, Vinyl. Whoa, I'm getting wicked flashbacks of my old English teacher. You sound just like her. Either way, I can't help but question the path we're taking. I swear I've seen that one mud puddle full of sticks before. Maybe you've been looking in a mirror. <laughs> see, see what I did there? I, I brought back the old gym. Meanwhile, at the other end of the forest... Jeez, that was kind of cool. Hey, Caramel. What's swinging? Not much, but, uh, ain't we missing a couple of ponies? It's still early. The ladies will be hopping in any time now and then. I hope they ain't lost. The forest is a mighty big place. Relax. I wrote down the directions and their invitations myself. There's no way to get What? Dang, blast it. Who put you in charge of the invitations? The mayor did? What about it? Do you remember when we went to that one restaurant that one time? Oh, I sure do. A bit stiff for my usual fare, but the waitresses were easy on the eyes. Right. But what I'm saying is, you got up to find the coach room, and it took you 20 minutes to find it. And when you did find it, it took you 20 more minutes to find your way back to the table. What's your point? I'm saying you can't navigate your way out of the empty barn with glowing signs going to the exit, let alone write directions on how to get here. Hey, it's cool, buddy. I made sure I was doing it right. Everybody else would be here, didn't they? Besides, there's only one mansion at the edge of the forest. You can't miss it. <sighs> I suppose... See? Now well, let's go mingle. Don't worry. They're fine. See? Here we are. I told you I wouldn't get us lost. Well, I suppose congratulations are in order. You've successfully led us safely to our destination without getting us hopelessly lost or eaten by wild beasts. I have, however, one more concern. And what would that be? Why is the mansion an eerie green glow. That's a mansion. Oh, sweet! They must have installed lighting effects! This is gonna be kicking! If 
vinyl. I hear some sort of spooky noises. Uh, yeah, it's it's a nightmare night party, after all. It's awful creepy. They really outdid themselves on the decorations, huh? Well, it's been a great night and ever so much fun, and I'm so glad I came. But I think it's time for me to get going. Aw, oh, come on, TV. You promised that you were gonna try to have fun and that we'd have a good time. You're not gonna leave me hanging, are you? No, uh, of course not. Then open the door and let's get this party started! Oh, why do I always get dragged into these situations? What I wouldn't give for a lovely cup of Earl Grey right now. You both arrive on the porch of the dilapidated old house. I wish I brought along a vacuum cleaner. This house is in dire need of it. <laughs> what, and ruin all the work that they put into making this place look absolutely spooktastic? I don't think so. Now, the invitation said in order to get in, we gotta find the key first. Find it? Why couldn't they have just let us in? Come on, it's it's just like a game, you know? Two frightened young mares stumbling across a creepy old house in the middle of the forest. Don't you ever, you know, role play or anything? I most certainly do not. Well, at least this is all just play pretend. It is all just play pretend, isn't it? Oh, of course it is. Now, where do you think that key is? I think I can make an educated guess. I noticed that some of the dialogue is off with, um, the actual voice work, but... It's not too big of an issue. Might be something to address, though. But, that's more or less just nitpicking. Let's actually continue with the game. Let's actually start this. Sure enough, a key is under the mat. Final seems eager for you to take it. At your friend's insistence, you take the creepy-looking key. Oh man, it's a skeleton key! Get it? Get it, Davy? Yeah. At least it's not clown-themed like the mayor did last year. Indeed. With a resounding click, the door unlocks. Oh yeah, Vinyl's gonna be in the house! Quite literally, too. Oh well, yeah, the mayor said to put the key back for the other invited party animals. Why? So, yeah, let's get on that before we go inside. Leaving a key under a doormat again, you lift the mat to replace the key. Seriously, putting a key back under a doormat when going into a house that should quite literally be condemned is literally one of the worst possible decisions you could make. I mean, seriously, you could get locked in by something. You slide the key under the mat. This all seems like a strangely arbitrary sequence of events that we have to perform just to enter a house. Hey, remember what I always tell you. Don't question the fun, Davey. Don't question the fun. Well, I wasn't questioning the fun myself. I was questioning the fact that you're leaving the key behind. This place is unusually empty for a party. Maybe this is still part of the whole experience. You think they're in the bag, maybe? Vinyl, we really ought to get out of here. I think this is the wrong place. Hold on, Davy. I'm gonna take a quick look around just in case. And she fell. Whoa! Ah! Vinyl! Vinyl! You begin to panic as your cries echo down the pit. But sound and sight are denied to you. You can no longer see nor hear your fallen friend. Immediately, you rush to the door to go find help. With a crash that freezes your blood, the door slams shut with a click. Your attempts to open it are futile. Something has locked you in. Ah, oh, let me out, let me out, let me out! Why is this door locked? What is going on here? Your mind fills with the fog of panic, but, you're str but you struggle to keep your rapidly beating heart under control as you focus on what's important. Alright, calm down. Vinyl... Vinyl probably fell under the house, so... I don't know, but it shouldn't be that big of a drop. I can find her. Although you can't logically explain her sudden disappearance, you begin to overcome your emotions and take a step forward. What was that? 
All of a sudden, you hear a tapping sound coming from the west. Perhaps it's your friend giving you a sign. I wouldn't be so sure about that. This is a content mansion. That noise might be Vinyl trying to message me. I have no time for anything else right now. I was trying to click on the door frame, Octavia. Wait, what's this? The noise is coming from that covered dish on the table. That can't be Vinyl, can it? No, that's not a Minecraft zombie sound. It's a little... it's different. I don't think it is. Let's see... Enjoy your meal, my son. Signed, Mom. Despite your apprehension, your curiosity gets the better of you. The strange noises under the dish are worth investigating. If anything, its contents might shed some light on the mystery of the house you stand in. And my cat just left. No, don't! Oh, <coughs> this can't be happening. This, why, how, what is this place? As you stare into the lifeless eyes of the rotting head, you can feel it staring back, almost as if it were still alive. Its steely gaze penetrates your mind, piercing the barriers between sanity and madness, and things begin to seep through you the cracks. Voices begin whispering in the corners of your thoughts, softly at first, but echoing louder as your willpower weakens. There is no chance for you, they claim. Your friend is already dead. There is no point in continuing your search, and there is no escape from this house. Surrender is the only civil option, one that will keep you from suffering for long. And you have a purpose. A purpose for them, and a purpose for the one who claims master over the house. Joining will not be in vain. Their words strike at your weakened heart. Something about them begins to convince you. Yes, that's right. I, uh, I should give up. There's no point in going on. There's... But even in the darkest of nights, a single spark can push back the foulest shadows, and you hear another voice screaming out from your soul. You're not gonna leave me hanging, are you? Instinctively, you reply. No, of course not. Of course not! No! I have to find her! I have to find Vinyl! I can't give up now, not for myself and not for her. At your claim, what feels like a torrential wind rushes through your head, followed by a sound alike to the howling of trees in a storm. When it dies down, you find yourself with a reforged sense of bravery. Determined, you lift your head high and continue your search. But tread carefully, lest the voices rise again. Vinyl will not be able to save you a second time. Wait, what the... Oh no, I thought the voices were gone. As paranoia takes over, you start to doubt yourself again. What the... Are you... narrating me? You... Oh, you can hear me, can you? But what? Who are you? Where did you suddenly come from? I've always been here, dear Octavia. I've been with you since the very start. How do you know my name? Why, there's a lot I know about you, my dear. Voices in one's head tend to know much about their hosts. Are you me, or am I just going mad? Well, that's a good question, isn't it? Suffice it to say that the shock of seeing that head must have dislodged something. Oh, I'm talking to myself. I'm going insane. Come now, have you never talked to yourself before? Wh what do you mean? Every pony's done that, certainly. Had a voice or two in their heads once in a while, or spoken to themselves when they're alone. Let's just say that I just happen to be louder than usual. So I'm not going crazy? Oh, you are. Slowly but surely. It's just that I'm not contributing to that. Don't worry, I'm not going to hurt you. So, what? You're just going to follow me around and say things? That's the idea, yes. Can I get rid of you? Probably not. Come on now. You have a friend to save, don't you? Time's wasting. Fine. I guess I have no choice for now. But really, I simply must say one thing. And what's that? 
I never would have thought that my inner voice would sound like some weird crusty old stallion. I don't make up the rules, dear. Caution. Unlike other adventure games, you cannot save at any time. You will find a way to save your game soon enough, but this is placed here so you don't have to replay the intro scene over and over again. Would you like to save? Yes. Oh, and sir, if you can hear that noise in the background, um... I still don't have a headset to work with, and the other setup that I have doesn't really work too well because of stereo mix. And I'm afraid it would be loud, I'm, I haven't tried it out or anything too much yet. So, I'm stuck with using my laptop's internal, um, microphone for now. So yeah, my apologies. Nothing I can really do about it, though. You gotta work with what you have. Anyways, save the file as... Actually, now nah, I'll drop the 8962. People know me as just Rock Rage anyways. And quite a, and off the bat, I can already tell that there are certain things that are not here before. You can't hope to reach the words on the ceiling, let alone take them. What's this? You see nothing special. That does nothing. Well, fine then. Wasn't even trying to do anything special anyways. Oh. I'm gonna take... Wait, what's this? Oh. As you draw closer, it gives you a kiss on the hoof, proclaims of its undying love, and the both of you end up living happily ever after in a two-story mansion with your 3,000 kids. Take your overactive imagination and get out of here! Well, fine, you don't need to yell at me. You're curious to know what the letters drawn on the wall are made out of, but not curious enough to touch it. Okay, so the... Or, and so the first word said, first word, magica, third word, fillerupa. I better remember this for later. I know to take the pan. You pan through the kitchenware. I had no idea that this is how my life would pan out to be. <clears throat> I'll just take the smallest one. Hmm, you know, I wonder what I can do with this thing alone. Not very much, by the looks of it. However, there might be a way to make items more useful with the help of another tool. Oh, I get to what you're trying to say. So I should try to be more inventive and combine certain things if I'm stuck somewhere. Indeed. I know vinyl's down there, but for now, I'm just gonna do what I know what to do. A wooden ladle, quite out of the ordinary. When I want vinyl out of the kitchen, at least. Yeah, dialogue kinda goes a little fast. That's something that might, that might also want to be taken into consideration. And already we start to lose a bit of our sanity. Yeah, you lose your sanity faster in this. What's this? Oh yeah, it's the cabinet. Oh, there's drawers this time. Even though I've already played this before, I'm gonna be treating it like I haven't. Just to kind of add to the spook factor. Second word, aqua. Aqua for Aquaman? Because he's really not that bad of a superhero. At least not as bad as everyone makes him out to be. An X is etched into the bottom of the drawer. No matter how much I hope it will, I don't think this leads to buried treasure. Well, something must be here to warrant ruining your own furniture for. Spider! Giant spider with giant fangs! A great knife-fanged spider, to be precise. Indigenous, deep in the Everfree Forest. Th that thing looks like it can eat ponies for breakfast. It preys on animals as big as a bread box. You're too big for it to take interest in, so you'll be fine. 
That is, unless you touch its web. Then its venomous bite will kill you quickly. <laughs> don't lose your head. It won't bother you if you don't bother it. Oh, great. Losing more of our sanity. I better hurry. I hope I don't accidentally squirt the oil on myself. It's really hard to wash off. And I normally never go anywhere near liquids of that sort, but vinyl threw some on my main as a prank once. I got it back by filling the speakers up with fish. We share an interesting relationship. I'm gonna need to open that thing soon enough. But first, I gotta get the key. I'm no percussionist, but this will make a lot of noise. Oh no, it's a timber wolf. Luckily it's still sleeping. I better tread lightly. Oh, oh no. There is a phrase around these parts. Let sleeping wolves lie. Unfortunately, you have decided to ignore such sage advice and must now plan your next few actions accordingly. If you don't have such a plan in mind, I suggest you make a haste you beat a hasty retreat. Alright, you beast. Have some of this! The plan works. The timber wolf starts to rear back with its tail between its legs. You approach the key, playing your music along the way. Once you get within reach, you throw your instrument down with a final crash and snatch up your prize, rushing away from the wolf before it can recover. Phew. I dropped the pan and spoon, but at least I got away. I hope this key was worth troubling a timber wolf for. Well, now we can o well now we can open that freaking toolbox and open the runners. The toolbox pops open, but the key breaks off in the lock. Don't worry though, you won't be needing it any longer. Well, I'm not sure I'll be able to put this to good use, but I suppose a wrench is always something convenient to have in places like these. I'm not actually sure if you need the wrench or not. You probably don't, but then again, you never know. Uninvited at a bunch of useless items. This game might have them too. At least you can put them back in the spot you found them. Oil, just pick this up here. Oil, just pick this up here. It took some effort, but I refilled the oil can without making a mess. So much for the container, though. All empty. Oh well, this will suffice. And I have no idea why I'm talking with a weird accent. And again, it might just be me. Before we actually, actually, let's open the, well, let's open this first. Wait, what's up in here though? Oh yeah, I haven't found any use for those items, so I'm more. The drawer won't pull all the way out. Maybe if I give it a good tug, I can force it open. Force it open. Oh, that opened it up a bit. Not enough to squeeze my hoof in though. Upon close examination, the metal runners at the side of the drawer seem to be a bit rusty and full of ick. No wonder this drawer won't open. It must not have been used in quite a while. I think I might be able to yank it open, though. That's enough. Looks like if I want to get the drawer open safely, I'm going to need to find a way to get those runners moving smoothly again. Just use oil. You squirt a few drops of oil onto the runners. The drawer now slides open with no resistance. I'm glad I took the time to find this. Who knows what would have happened if I just decided to pry the drawer open. Drop the item. Okay. What did the pony say when he wanted to grab hold of the past? What? Tongs for the memories. Yeah, I'll just take them. Oh great, we're losing more of our sanity. It slices, it dices, and... Well, that's about it, really. Either way, this ought to come in use. <clears throat> okay, so I'll grab the key from the mouth. Whoops, I gotta examine it first. <clears throat> the tongs provide enough of a grip for you to work the key out of the mouth. Pulling with force, the key finally pulls loose from the head. As you hold the key in your hoof and admire your handiwork, a startling realization comes to mind. Egots! I'm holding something that's been in a dead pony's mouth! Yuck! 
Come on, drop. Put the thongs down. Let's talk to Vinyl. I know where she is. As you approach the dumbwaiter, you can barely hear some voices echoing up the chute. <clears throat> Amongst the voices, you hear some pony very familiar trying to stir up a crowd and get them all to partay. <clears throat> oh my gosh, she's. You stick your head in and shout. Vinyl! Vinyl, for the love of all things good in this world, please respond! Please tell me that you are okay. Yo, that you, Tavi? Your friend is still alive and well. You feel a great weight lifted off your shoulders upon hearing her voice. Final. Oh my gosh, I'm relieved that nothing serious happened to you. Oh yeah, that rug cushioned my fall. Thank goodness, too, because the last thing these ponies want is a dead DJ. What are you even doing down there? What's ponies? There is a party de being de held down here with food, drinks, and guests all mingling about. You cannot be serious. I am, but the guests here look... depressed. Like something horrible is going to happen to them. After what I have witnessed up here, I do not blame them. No pony in their right mind will be enjoying themselves in this ghastly domain. Aw, oh, come on. It isn't so bad down here. Case in point. Look, can you leave the room you're in now? Nope, the door is shut tight. Then I have no choice. Vinyl, I'm going to head down to where you are as soon as possible and set you all free. Oh yeah! Octavia is taking charge of this, Hizzy. Hey, if you want to talk about something or don't know what to do, come back over to the dumbwaiter. <laughs> Dumb. Er, we'll lay down some serious brainstorms. Sounds like a plan. Stay put and keep me informed on what's going on down there. Cool. Don't leave me hanging. I won't. I better get into that safe room as fast as possible now. There. It's unlocked. The door pulls open, casting a length of warm and inviting light upon you. You feel the illustrious rays pushing away the dreary darkness that hangs about your soul. Even the ghostly whispers that haunt your thoughts fall silent in the aura of the room's glow, and you can't help but take a peek within. Sweet Celestia, it's... beautiful. You waste no time stepping inside. That was where the demo ended previously. You throw yourself into the study, shutting the door behind you. A convenient bolt allows you to lock it for that extra bit of safety. The voices in your head start to fade as the constant cloud lifts as an, and a gentle clarity returns to your mind. Oh, thank goodness. Finally, some sanctuary. I never thought I'd be this happy to find a well-lit room. And just in time, too. I wasn't sure how much longer I could keep it up out there. I'm ever so tired of all this investigation and puzzle solving and looking at the... Ooh, what's that curious little thing over there on the table? You approach the strange looking device, giving it a more thorough look. Oh, I think I know what this is. It's some sort of recorder. I see now. You have your standard buttons here for recording and tracking, and there's one of these old fashioned tapes stuck in the slot. Very quaint. The tape looks like it has been used. I wonder if some pony has been recording something. Curious to see what it holds, you rewind the tape and hit the play button. I have them. That foolish Zebra didn't even know I was here. But then again, what else can you expect from one of her kind? That was probably her fault in the first place. It is only right there and that, that I use her own tools to undo it. I have no time to write, so I'll be recording. This is the first journal on my attempt to return Sour Note to his rightful place. Alright, let's see what's in these scrolls. No, no, no! What is this? Why would she employ such useless magic? I thought she was that after s at spells and magic. Isn't that what they all say? This one isn't even in standard equestrian. What is this zebra writing? Useless! <sighs> Wait here, this looks... The Song of the Undead? Well, you might have just proven your worth after all, Zebra. 
I certainly have access to the necessary ingredients, and my cello should suffice to hold the enchantment. Yes. Yes, this is exactly what I need. Not too long now, my dear Sour Note. I shall bring you back, this I swear. Song of the Undead? Just what is going on here? Ooh, something bad's happened. That, that's for sure. Well, I think I should ju use this thing to leave a log of my actions, just in case something unfortunate happens to me. If anybody else were to stumble across this place, at least I'll be able to leave a warning or such. You rewind the tape and begin saving your story. My name is Octavia Melody, and I am trapped inside this house. My final words I leave with you for those who discover this odd rock rage. Well, at least now we have a way to save him. Our progress. This is a scroll right here. A quick examination of the scroll shows that it is a recipe of some kind. Not just any recipe, it's for a potion. This is definitely going to have to come with me. Okay. What's this? Oh, it's a laboratory. Huh. That's kind of cool. Oh, matchbook. Oh, that's how we read the scrolls. That's right. <clears throat> might as well save. Might as well save quickly, because I have a feeling something bad might happen. I better take the hat, too. You take the hat. Hat's off to me. I'm not going to be doing things in any particular order as well. I'm just going to be doing them in the way I discover, in a way that I know that they work. Simply amazing. Amazing that I managed to use critical problem-solving techniques to overcome this small hurdle in a creative and challenging way that promotes parallel out-of-the-box thinking. No, you're using a hat instead of finding a proper bowl. It's amazing how lazy you are. Hey, you work with what you've got, man. I technically just said that to myself. Oh well. Knife for a cutting board. Easy fix. And there's a broken test tube. We're not gonna be needing that, though. Oh, and here's a treasure chest. Now this should take the weight off your shoulders. You stumble upon a large storage chest. Hmm, maybe I can keep anything important in here for later. Chest tutorial. Interact with the chest to choose or drop or take inventory. If you are giving, choose an item and then click on the POV screen. When the chest is open... and when the chest is open. When taking, click on the item you want to take, then click the add button. Click close to stop giving or taking before you leave the room. The chest can store eight items at a time. It's more than your pathetic six. I'll leave the wrench... and the tongs in here. Because those items are practically useless. Well, the tongs are useless now. They serve... They serve their purpose. Okay... I don't think there's a point at clicking on that pot. Better check around the place. I know there's some items I gotta go after. Hopefully this will give me more pep. It's a good thing I remember those magic words, because I'm gonna need to. Oh, and also, remember the kitchen areas. You're gonna need to remember them... soon enough. There's nothing in the fridge, I don't think. No, there's absolutely nothing in here that we can use. Don't know why I bothered to look again. Oh, wait a moment, I just realized. I can make a potion. Okay, put on the table. You place the scroll on the table for easy reference. Sun's Kiss. For a shard of cosmic fire harnessing Celestia's ire, stone and metal stand in shame, brought to dust, wrecked in flame. Find a pod that's red and thin. Take out all the stones within. Add them gently, do not spill. 
One bud's worth shall fit the bill. Add a liquid black and slick that makes your things no longer stick. Count out drops of which you pour, more than two, less than four. Find some soldiers lying flat in wooden shirt and crimson hat. Crush their clothing up together, make sure they're in equal measure. Add a pinch and thus proclaim, Soul Ignitus, burn away. Okay, we might as well start a recipe, but I better grab a flask. I better grab this a flat this flask first. What are the magic words? Magica? Aqua? Filarepa. The moment the words leave your mouth, the cauldron quickly fills itself with a shining milk-like liquid and instantly begins to boil. Wow, I... uh... wasn't expecting that to actually work, to be honest. Well, it seems that just any pony would be able to make use of this thing. Perhaps it was all designed with non-unicorns in mind. I'm hardly qualified either way, but I'll try for vinyl's sake. Once you start a spell, you cannot leave the laboratory. Please make sure that all the necessary ingredients for the brew you want to make are gathered and with you before beginning. Please state the name of the spell you want to start. Sun's Kiss. I'm not entirely sure if it has to, if it's case sensitive or not, but I just do it in all caps because that's how it's written on the scroll. Either way, it seems to work. The air in the room starts to feel thick as the potion releases a cloud of unknown gas. The heat from the cauldron rises dramatically and the potion turns a rather soft shade of red. Quickly now, finish the spell before it gets too hot to handle. Okay, let's do this with the peppers. That item can't be crushed. Oh yeah, I forgot, I gotta cut off. You slice the peppers in half and scrape out the seeds that lie within. If a bowl of stewed meat is called chili, why isn't a bowl of stewed chilies called meat? You eat stewed meat? Well, let's just say I had an unfortunate experience at a Griffin Cafe once. Lovely. Absolutely lovely. Now, this is one thing you gotta remember that's crucial. It's the matches that are in the ingredient, but here's what you gotta do for the matches. You cannot cut them from there, otherwise it won't work. You gotta cut them here. You pull out a sizable number of matches from the book, whittling their sticks down with your knife. There, I think I have an even ratio by my best estimate. This ought to do the trick. And then you gotta mash them up. You take the matches and grind them up as best you can. There, I hope that this will do. And let's begin. Let's start by adding in the pepper seeds. You toss a hoofful of the pep of, of the pepper seeds into the cauldron. They sink into the murky depths of the of the concoction. The bubbles rise for a moment, but their fury dies down soon after. Okay, everything's going well, I think. Pepper seeds was one of the correct ingredients. Looking back, I probably should have saved before I did this, but oh well. How many drops should you add? Three. Less than, more than two, less than four. It's three. You squirt three drops of oil in the strange soup. Each drop lights up upon contact of the liquid. Okay, that should do. And you gotta throw in these, not the matchsticks you have left. You sprinkle the ground matches into the cauldron. Small embers ignite on the surface of the water. Well, nothing's exploding, so I guess that means the mixture is right. That's it. The potion shines and shimmers like a freshly made bowl of soup. Say the magic words and end the spell. Oh wait, no, that's not right. Let me try that again. Yeah, I had trouble with this. Oh yeah. So yeah, don't get mad at me just because I can't remember exactly. Oh, 
Oh, there we go. Just take out the exclamation point. A mushroom-shaped burst of fire explodes out of the top of the cauldron in typical fashion, but the potion remains calm and serene otherwise. It seems to be cooling to manageable levels. Extraordinary. I think I'm now a, a certified alchemist. Now I need to find something to carry this potion around. This. You need to make sure it's one of these flasks. Otherwise, you'll throw something into the into the mix and it will kill you. You very carefully fill the flask with the magical mixture. The potion glows with an incandescent crimson and the glass starts to warm. Liquid fire. It's like a cross between a nightlight and a hot water bottle. As you cork the flask, the mixture in the cauldron reverts back to its previous state, awaiting a new recipe. And seeing as how I've gone over 40 minutes, I'd probably better make a jump cut here. Because things might get lengthy in the next part too, and I don't want this to be over an hour long. So, I'll see you all in part two, folks.